as you can see from the signboards, we are actually along uh, Mount Faber Road, heading into Mount Faber Park. For those of you who don't know, uh, Mount Faber Park is actually one of the oldest parks in Singapore. And we are going to go in there and explore it a bit and find out a bit of the history here. So let's get going. We are heading towards Mount Faber Park, okay, which is a park that covers a land area of around 56 hectares, which has a wide variety of flora and fauna. And at the top, it offers a panoramic view of the southwestern coast of Singapore, the surrounding southern islands, and the nearby Indonesian archipelago. But before that, uh, at the foot of the mountain, is this place here, okay, which is called uh, the Keramat uh, Radin Mas, okay, or which is a shrine of uh, Radin Mas Ayu, a Javanese princess who shielded her father from being killed only to be killed herself. This is a uh, Malay legend that is related to this mountain and to the surrounding area. These are one of the legends or folk tale of the Malay culture here that actually relate to Singapore and uh, were in existence before the British came to Singapore, which we will tell you more about later. Okay, now we just talk more about Mount Faber. Okay, Mount Faber is actually located in the Bukit Merah area in the central region of Singapore standing 106 meters above sea level. It was originally known as Teluk Belanga Hill. Uh, it was renamed Mount Faber in 1846 or 1845 after Charles Edward Faber of the Madras engineers who built a narrow winding road to the summit uh, for a new signal station and flagstaff. But nowadays, Mount Faber uh, which used to have a fort, you know, used to have a signal station, is now more known as a. Uh, for this, most more known for this place here called Faber Peak, where there's actually uh, restaurants and bars, and of course, the cable car. Okay, there's actually a Singapore cable car station here, which actually uh, connects. Mount Faber to Sentosa. Okay. So if you do come here, you you can have uh, you can take a cable car from here to Sentosa, and you can also have a nice view, or what, what you can call a panoramic view uh, of Sentosa and the surrounding places, which is actually quite nice. Let's just continue uh, regarding the legend. The Malay legend of uh, Radin Mas. Okay, so uh, the legend begins with uh, Radin Mas' father, which is called uh, Pangeran Adipati Agung, who was the brother of a sultan in the kingdom of Jawa. Okay, he was a very brave and courageous warrior, and well loved, well loved by his people. He fell in love with a dancer. Uh, of a dance troupe uh, who was uh, performing at the palace and since he is his royalty he's not supposed to marry a commoner so what happened was he actually wedded her in secret and their union bought them a beautiful little girl who they named uh, Radin Mas Ayu meaning golden princess okay, before long the king finally found out and he was angry and he wanted to punish uh, the dancer okay. so when the opportunity arose uh, when the kingdom was being threatened by uh, being invaded by invaders the king sent Pangeran to quell the threat and while 
while he was away, the king's men he burned down his house, and his wife actually perished in the fire. But fortunately, the daughter was rescued by a loyal servant. Okay, so when Pangiran returned from the battle, he found out what happened, and he served uh, his royal ties from his brother at the palace and left the kingdom together with Radin Mas and the royal servant. Okay, so this is part one of the story. Okay, as you turn around here, okay, we are actually heading towards the top of Mount Faber. Okay, so we just walk along this pathway okay, and walk up here. One thing I do notice nowadays that um, unfortunately Mount Faber is more of a people who visit Mount Faber are mostly tourists because bus loads and bus loads of tourists come to Mount Faber and they come here to look at the view and rarely do I see much uh, local people coming to one of the oldest parks in Singapore but anyway this is the top of Mount Faber where they actually planted a tree okay and from the top here you can have a very panoramic view of the southern parts of Singapore uh, no, the Sentosa you can, on a clear day, you can even see the Indonesian archipelago as you can see here and then towards the right there, you can actually even see the Pasir Panjang uh, port and if you turn around you can start to see more buildings and a lot of HDB flats Especially over here, where you can see like Telok Belanga, Bukit Perme, these are all the different HDB estates, all behind the mountain, all behind Mount Faber. Anyway, another thing that you can also notice is that at the bottom here, which is just below the, the top of Mount Faber, there's a lot of murals. Okay, so these murals are placed here to tell the history of Singapore. Uh, like this one here tell you the original name of Singapore was actually Damase okay, and it was small uh, religious okay, and all the history of Singapore this is probably about when Raffles came to Singapore Sir Stanford Raffles and go along all the way here you know, different times uh, in the history of Singapore this is where the Chinese traders came to trade at Boat Key It shows Singapore's history as a trading hub. Also, all the way here, all the way here will tell all the way um, Singapore history to present time. So if you do have some time, just walk around here to have a look. It's something that not many people come here to see. Okay, now let us continue with part two of our Radin Mas legend. Okay, so what happened is the, the trio, Pan Garen, Radin Mas and the loyal servant, actually sailed away from the kingdom and finally landed on the island of Singapore where they settled down in a village at Teluk Belanga. Okay, so they kept quiet about their royal lineage and just lived as normal villagers until the island was actually harassed by sea pirates and then Pangiran led a group of uh, villagers to defeat the, the pirates. So when news of his valor reached the Sultan of Singapore, the Sultan of Singapore invited him to the palace. And just so happened, uh, at that time, an envoy from Java was also there. And he was surprised to see Pangaren. So he informed the Sultan of uh, Pangaren's identity. The Sultan was so delighted that he had the prince there. He actually arranged for the prince to marry the prince, his princess and so Pangaren agreed to the marriage and he married the princess and he had a son with her okay the son was named Tengku Chik so in the meantime uh, Radin Mas grew up into grew up to be a beautiful woman and her stepmother was jealous of her beauty and because she was also very close to her father so what happens was uh, the stepmother 
uh, was afraid that, that she couldn't compete uh, with Radin Mas for uh, Pangera's attention. So, so she uh, knew that she had a nephew. Uh, the name of the nephew was called Tengku Bagus, who actually uh, was in love with Radin Mas and wanted to marry her. So together, Tengku Bagus and the stepmother came up with a plot. Okay, the plot was... What was the plot? We'll continue with the plot later on. Mount Faber Park is actually a nice little park. It has a lot of nice landscaping done and it has a lot of panoramic views of the surrounding area. But unfortunately, some of the views are actually blocked by the foliage of trees that grew too tall. And also, uh, access here, um, especially hiking up here, is there are some very steep steps that you actually have to climb up uh, to climb up to the top of Mount Faber. Other than that, it's a very nice, uh, quiet, cozy little place. Next up, let's continue with the plot. The plot to kidnap Pangaren. The plot that they came up with was that he got Pan Pangaren drunk and then after that he held him prisoner in an unused deep well. The next day, the Kubagos proposed to Radin Mas and threatened Radin Mas that he would kill Pangaren if she refused to marry him. Um, she had no choice but to agree. So during the ceremony, Radin Mas was asked if her father had given her permission to marry. She being fearful for her father's life, she lied to him. She lied and said that her father died while visiting Java. And at this instant, Tengku Chik, as you if you remember, was actually the son, was actually his son, uh, with um, the stepmother and Pangaren. He blurted out that he actually has seen uh, their father alive in an unused well. So, the plot was revealed and then Pangaren was rescued. Afraid of Pangaren's revenge, Tenku Bagus drew his kris. For those who don't know, the kris is actually a uh, jagged Malay style sword. Okay. So, Tenku Bagus drew out his kris and lunged at Pangaren. Radin Mas sprang forward and shielded her beloved, her beloved father with her body and the kris plunged into her heart, killing her. Then, the stepmother, doing the commotion, tried to sneak away, and while she was sneaking away, lightning struck her and killed her. Here ends the tale of Radin Mas Ayu, a Javanese princess who shielded her father from being killed, only to be killed herself. Tragically, she died young, and her body now lies in the tomb at the foot of Mount Faber, uh, we actually passed the two on the way up. So, I hope you enjoyed the story. And I hope you also enjoyed not only the story, but uh, the visit to uh, Mount Faber Park. And if you like what you see, you know what to do. Please like, share and subscribe. And don't forget to join me for my next adventure. Bye-bye.